The Doom Park branch was a part of the Indiana Harbor Railway System, extending originally from Indiana Harbor to Burns Harbor, Indiana. It was rerouted from Indiana Harbor to Gibson Yard in Hammond, Indiana between 1907 and 1908 to allow for the construction of U.S. Steel Gary Works. The Gary and Western is an elevated industrial line that runs east and west through the middle of northern Gary, Indiana. Most of the original Doom Park branch is now abandoned save for a short section between Gibson Yard and Chase Street in Gary, Indiana. The Indiana Harbor Railroad was formed November 22, 1901 with majority financial backing from New York Central and Hudson River Railroad. It built a 12-mile line that began at the shore of Lake Michigan in East Chicago, generally running south to end at a connection with the Joliet and Northern Indiana Railway. This allowed connections with all major railroads that ran around the shore of Lake Michigan and allowed cities and the state of Indiana to have better trading power on the Great Lakes via the yet-to-be-completed Indiana Harbor and Ship Canal. In 1905, service was extended to connect the region's industries to the coal fields of Danville, Illinois. This extension is known as the Danville Branch. This branch connected to the New York Central Little Egypt branch that extended from Danville to Cairo, Illinois. As a result of financing Indiana Harbor Railroad, New York Central reserved track rights all over its system, allowing it to reach Cairo and point south. In spite of the announcement of Gary Works construction a half year prior, on January 7, 1906, a contract was awarded to the F.L. Hardigan Company of Chicago to build a branch for Indiana Harbor Railroad. This branch would be called the Dune Park Branch. The Dune Park Branch was built because of the need for the ever-growing Knickerbocker Ice Company to quickly access the Chicago market without using other railroad companies' main lines. Knickerbocker was also a sand mining business that owned extensive property in the area in and immediately around Baileytown, now known as Burns Harbor, Indiana. The Doom Park branch was an 18 to 20 mile east-west industrial line that began at Indiana Harbor in East Chicago. From there, it headed southeast following the original Baltimore and Ohio right-of-way through the Clark Tract and into the area occupied by the Calumet Heights Gun Club, now property owned by U.S. Steel Gary Works. It then made a turn due east, which took the line away from the B&O, knifing through Miller, and finally northeast through Ogden Dunes into Burns Harbor. At Burns Harbor, a rail yard was constructed that was known as Dune Park Yard. In March 1906, Indiana Harbor Railroad decided to build their terminal freight yard at Gibson, now Hammond, Indiana. They originally planned to place this yard at property bought in St. John, Indiana, but was assured by Michigan Central Railroad that they would move their shops from Michigan City, Indiana to Gibson. The decision to build at Gibson was a power move as competition between New York Central and its competitors was fierce in the region. Between April 1st and April 6th, Hardigan Construction had completed construction of the original Doom Park branch. By 1906, engineers were already managing teams of laborers that were starting the process of removing sand dunes on the site that would host Gary Works. To facilitate the construction of the steel mill, the newly constructed Doom Park branch the Baltimore and Ohio and Lakeshore Michigan Southern right-of-ways had to be relocated. In the case of the Doom Park branch, it was to be the one that had to move the furthest south of Gary Works. The relocation would cause the loss of its original right-of-way, taking it away from Indiana Harbor and the connection to Indiana Harbor Railroads, now CINS Danville branch. To remedy this, the branch was rerouted to the next major rail yard, Gibson Yard, 
which was still being constructed. This will reconnect the Doom Park branch to the Danville branch. After a vote to gain permission to build through the town of Gary, the Gary and Western Railway Company was incorporated October 6, 1906. Construction of the relocated line began in March of 1907 by hiring 100 men to clear the right-of-way of vegetation from Ivanhoe Junction at the west end and the original right-of-way at the east end, working their way towards each other in the middle of Gary. Because of real estate fights in court, economic downturns, and labor issues, construction of all main components took over a year to complete. Politicians and architects in charge of plotting out the city of Gary originally planned for the relocated branch to run at grade. However, Gary's first mayor, Thomas Knotts, thought it would be best to elevate the rerouted line through his city, citing that there were plans of elevating the Lakeshore and Michigan Southern and Baltimore and Ohio tracks already and having another ground level railroad in the immediate vicinity of other already existing ground level railroads would be a highly dangerous situation for residents of the new town. Many propositions for elevating different railroads were considered, yet Lakeshore and Michigan Southern relented and allowed for the elevation of the rerouted Doom Park line to commence. Gary and Western was a non-operating entity meaning that it owned no railroad equipment, nor was it responsible for any railroad operations. It was a real estate holder that charged an annual fee to any railroad that utilized it. Gary and Western started at Gibson Yard and ended at Gary and Western Junction, where the original right-of-way met the new right-of-way at the curve through North Gary. East from the Gary and Western Junction, the line continued to be called the Doom Park Branch. However, CINS would operate both Gary and Western and Doom Park Branch as one single line, though the line was still called different names on paper. New York Central tapped the entire Indiana Harbor, now called CINS system, which connected with every railroad coming in and out of Chicago. It was at Gary where New York Central would consolidate most of the freight that was set to go south. It utilized the Gary and Western extensively, which served as an easy path for its westbound trains to get around the railroad congestion near the main lines that traveled past the steel mills. Indiana Harbor Belt Railroad, formed in 1907 by consolidating the East Chicago Belt Railroad with the Terminal Railroad, Chicago Hammond and Western Railroad, and the Chicago Junction Railway. Because these railroads were New York Central subsidiaries, Indiana Harbor Belt automatically inherited both the Gary and Western and the CINS Dune Park branch. Indiana Harbor Belt operated nearly exclusively on the Dune Park branch and treated it as one line in spite of it being called two different names on paper. The Dune Park branch had frequent traffic from New York Central and infrequent traffic from EJ&E, Baltimore and Ohio, Milwaukee Road, and Lakeshore, Michigan Southern, which paid Gary and Western an annual rent. Ever since the relocation of the original CINS route to the Gary and Western, plans were made to start a passenger service. This service was to be for employees of Gary Works and Gibson Yards exclusively at first, and then expanded to include regular passengers. People were most excited about this passenger service, being that there was yet to exist an interurban streetcar line that took employees from Hammond through the south side of Proto Gary and Tolleston. This passenger service was expected to follow soon after the Gary and Western's initial completion, yet that did not happen, to the chagrin of the residents of Hammond who worked at Gary Works. Though they had promised to start a passenger service, studies conducted by the railroad companies indicated that it would be a losing proposition financially. Because of this, it was 1909 before they finally relented and allowed for passenger service to commence on the Gary and Western, as long as customers paid. Further complicating matters was the near completion of the South Bend Interurban Streetcar System, now known as the South Shore Line that operated service from Gary to Chicago. 
First, Chicago, Lakeshore, and South Bend would utilize the Gary and Western to reach Hammond until its own right of way was completed. However, this did not happen. The Gary and Western needed to be electrified in order to facilitate their cars, and the railroads were not willing to pay the cost of materials and construction. As it stood, the Gary and Western had no electric switches or signals of any kind along its entire route. It was dark territory and kept that way to keep cost of maintenance down. Gary and Interurban was rapidly expanding. However, the Doom Park branch was completed before Gary and Interurban could complete its line from Hammond to Gary. Passenger service would operate via shuttle. The Gary and Western shuttle was ran by steam dummy locomotives that used surplus industrial coke as fuel to cut down on smoke. The passenger cars were of the older models and donated by different railroads that utilized Gibson Yard. Throughout the winter and spring of 1909, passenger depots were constructed in Hammond near the Michigan Central Depot, at Gibson Yard, at Ivanhoe, at West Gary, now Brunswick, at Broadway on an elevated platform, and at Virginia Street at the freight depot near the Virginia Street entrance to Gary Works. Service started in May of 1909 with 18 trains a day running east and west. Yet things didn't go so well for the dummy shuttle. First, New York Central refused to extend the Gary and Western deeper into Hammond. As a result, passengers had to walk half a mile from the nearest streetcar stop at downtown Hammond to the Michigan Central Depot at Calumet Avenue. This inconvenience caused many would-be customers to utilize regular passenger trains to reach Gary Works. Those that used the shuttle suffered in the elements in order to reach Hammond. On the east end, though the shuttle stopped near Virginia Street entrance to Gary Works, most steel mill employees worked at the Sheet and Tin Mill on Buchanan Street. Passengers had to walk from Virginia Street to Buchanan Street in order to get to work also suffering through the elements the entire way. Passenger accommodation was also abysmal. The donated passenger cars were raggedy and drafty. The coal fire heaters in the cars were of little help. It was no different than sitting in a regular box car, which did eventually end up replacing the old passenger cars by the beginning of 1910. As a result, women complained about the conditions to the media, openly ridiculing the railroads for neglecting them and causing discomfort by having more than enough means to improve their services. Soon after Gary and Western started the shuttle, the Gary and Interurban finally completed its line from Hammond to Gary. This took more paying customers away from the Gary and Western shuttle service, who favored reaching Gary Works more directly and cheaply. It was the Gary and Interurban system that eventually killed shuttle service on the Gary and Western. The final shuttle departed Virginia Street for Hammond at 9.24 p.m. on April 14, 1910. The only remnant of passenger service was a late night shuttle from Hammond to Gibson Yard for railroad employees.